We have Courtney Dominguez, a financial advisor at Payne Capital Management here to discuss. And Courtney, when we parse through some of the bank earnings that we got today, obviously it was very different pictures when we take a look at J.P. Morgan and Citi compared to mm -hmm. Wells Fargo. What do you make of those numbers and what does it tell us about the health overall of the banking system right now? Yeah, what I found really interesting is you look at J.P. Morgan and Citi, one of the big reasons that they beat expectations is because of the bond revenues last year which is pretty fascinating because last year, as well as the stock markets did, investors were so nervous, they were throwing money into things like money markets and bond funds, and that actually really worked into their favor, which I do actually find is a positive sign because um, balance sheets are still really strong, the economy is still really on good footing right now, and so I think you're eventually gonna see a lot of that money going back into the markets as you're getting that FOMO mentality. So this has led to a good, good earnings season for the bank so far, and I think it's actually leading to a good year in 2020. Yeah, earnings will be in focus, especially over the next several weeks. When we take a look at the S&P, it went from 14 times earnings to 19 times earnings in 2019. Those are some of the numbers that you sent over. The average, the 10-year average, is just around 15. Do you yeah. think, what do you expect in terms of earnings? How important will that be for the S&P to continue that upward trajectory? I think earnings are really gonna be the prime focus mm -hmm. because last year it was really just sentiment that changed and people were getting more optimistic and so prices got really expensive, earnings weren't quite following and so now valuations are higher. Mm -hmm. If we see earnings catch up, we can bring valuations back to their historical averages. We just need those earnings to pick up and the consensus is right now that earnings should be increasing about 11% this year. And if anything, as we tend to see, expectations tend to, um, or earnings tend to beat their expectations. So I would actually prepare to see surprise on the positive, which is a good, good news for those valuations. Are there any sectors that you're favoring or any sectors that you expect to outperform more than others this earnings season? I think tech did so well last year that it's not necessarily my main focus right now. And I'm really happy with that. And I'm not necessarily bearish on it, but I think there's a lot of other sectors that are better value right now. So your big US companies did fantastic. If I have new money I'm adding right now, I'm actually looking abroad because their valuations are significantly cheaper. Whether it's developed markets or emerging markets, they're below their historical averages, whereas the US is much higher than our historical averages right now. Do you think we're gonna have a change in some of these leadership names? I mean, we've talked about the outperformance of technology last year, even when you yeah. take a look at since the start of the year, a lot of those big names continue to do very well. Is that going to change in the near future? That's been happening for about a decade. You have just these couple companies that are really leading the markets. And what's actually kind of fascinating is if you look at just the U.S. versus foreign, if you take out our big tech companies, they've actually performed about the same. It's just that we have these few firms that are really leading our growth overall. That doesn't tend to happen decade over decade. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know if and when that'll happen, but I, I would definitely look at other places right now because we've had a decade of that. I don't see that continuing decade over decade. What's interesting uh, today, we saw stocks well off their highs of the day. They're still off their highs of the day, although the Dow now back around 71 points. And this came after the Bloomberg report that some of the tariffs on the goods will not be taken back until after the 2020 election. When you take a look at that from a market perspective, how concerning is that or how significant is that move? This has happened so many times. We keep thinking things are gonna get figured out, then they're not figured out, they are figured out, they aren't. I mean, I think this is probably more of the same. You're gonna get these knee-jerk reactions with the markets, but fundamentally it hasn't changed where the economy is. These prices have not yet been passed on co to consumers. Wages are still rising, consumers are still really strong, but they can probably sustain some of that regardless. So I think it's more just a headline you're getting knee-jerk reactions. I don't think it's anything to be worried about in the long run. Do you think a lot of our, most of the uncertainty in regards to trade is already priced into the market at this point? I think it is, but I think there's still more surprises the positive as, as things get figured out or as this phase one deal or some phase two at some point in time, if we see what, everyone that happens, I think that can really, it, it's just adding some uncertainty right now. So I think a lot of the bad news is priced in, but more upside is only going to be a good thing. All right, Courtney Dominguez, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.